So you said finding money for COG was what, a three year? Awesome. Yeah, it was probably about three years. I, I had an idealism that I'd write the script and it'd be a David Sedaris thing, the first and probably only David Sedaris project. And my thing was, so okay, even though it's a little dark and offbeat, people are going to want to make it. You know, people are going to make this and make it on a higher end indie budget level, you know, like a few million. And it was, na it was a little naive on my end to think that you know, I was putting a lot of restrictions on it. You know, I think when you're going for money, you need to know what, how willing, how, where are your priorities? For me, my priority wasn't controlling the material, keeping the script the same, and, and being able to decide on having, you know, the final say on casting. Like, those are the kind of things then that are going to push investors away. Not to say that if I embraced all those things, anyone would have jumped on board, but ultimately I'm making a movie that was dealing with religious themes, themes of sexuality, you know, stuff that isn't necessarily... I, I, every time I see a, a, an independent film, I'm like, I don't know how they got it financed. And I mean, I always feel it as a compliment, you know, especially when I see ones made like that. I'm like, how did that happen? I think every single film finds its own way, um, and usually that way is totally different than the previous way, you know? I mean, this, this was... It was just a long process of really getting a lot of no's. At one point, I think I calculated it was like, it started, once it got like over like 150 no's or so, I just, I stopped counting. Like I kept a running chart. And when it was like hit that many of people, like financiers or producers or companies, production companies that had passed on it, then I just like stopped keeping a number tally because it got a little depressing. You know, I, I feel like I have a thick skin, but I think it's okay for anyone to feel like 150 rejections on the same script is, is a little, it can be a little mind numbing, you know? But um, it was, you know, but it was about, I thought the system would sort of serve me a little better. Like I thought, well, I made my first film and people saw it and people liked it and now I've written the script and it's a well-known author and I have agents and it's gonna, it'll, it'll come together in the way it should. And it was kind of wrong for me to feel that way because ultimately it came together through whatever resources I sort of engaged and build and so I had support from you know, film independent that I had on my own that I had built over, over the years and they, I got brought into a program where I met a producer who came on board that brought financing. You know, so it was one of those things that ended up being through my own path. And not to say that as, a, as anything negative towards the agency route, but just to say that like at no point should you ever just sort of be like, okay, well now I have reps and uh, they're gonna get it all taken care of. Like no, at the end of the day, you're, only re you're always responsible for yourself. And I think financing is no different. Um, just about always staying on top of anyone you know, anyone who might know someone with money and just always staying persistent on it and, and keep on pushing and keep on pushing because it's, it's gonna, everyone's gonna say no. I mean, rarely do I, have I ever, I've rarely ever heard of a story where someone was like, I, was, I sent the script out, people liked it, we got it made. Like, it, that maybe happens with genre films, but I don't think it ever happens with a, a, a drama or a comedy or especially not a dark comedy, you know?